What is an equation? An equation is a statement that asserts the equality of two expressions. An example would be 5x equals 25. I know all of this sounds trivial, but in this seemingly basic video, we will set that foundation for something big. Only after carefully analyzing the basics, you can start asking the difficult questions. Something like, does dividing both sides of an equation by a real number change anything? And what if I divide by 0? Does the equation still hold? Or what does it even mean to divide something by 0? This technique of breaking down the problem in parts or tackling a simpler version of the problem first works surprisingly well for almost everything in life. So if nothing makes sense to you right now and you're one of those people who are like what does it even matter, marna to hai ye ek din, maybe you could try a simpler problem, maybe start by cleaning your room before you figure out your career. Now, bahut hoge life lessons. Let's get started on the lesson on linear algebra. This video will focus on problems in two variables. A system of equations consists of two elements, the variables and the equations. The solution to such a system is all the points alpha, beta that satisfy the given equations. Now one equation can constrain one variable only. The other variable is free. So 1, 3, 2, 5 and infinite other points are the solution to the system. A general way to write the solution is c, 2c plus 1, where c belongs to r. So you assume the free variable as a random number c and solve the other variable in terms of the free variable. Graphically, this one equation is satisfied by these infinite points that all come together to make a line. Now let me take another system with two variables and these two equations. Technically, these are not the same x and y in the two equations. From the first equation, we have xy as 2,5 or 3,7. But from the second equation, xy are 2 minus 2 or 3, 1. These are clearly not the same values. The solution to the system is again all the points alpha, beta that satisfy the given equations. The common practice for finding this alpha, beta is for x and y to play the role of alpha, beta. This abuse of notation is convenient, but it is a bit confusing at first. So for this video, I won't be doing any abusing. We start by assuming that sum AB satisfies both the equations. And since by assumption, it must satisfy both the equations simultaneously, we can put them in the equations. Now because we have the same AB in both the equations, we can substitute the B from the first equation into the second equation, and then solve the system to obtain A equal to 1 and B equal to 3, which is a unique solution, a single point that satisfies both the equations. Graphically, all the points that satisfy the only the pink equation alone constitute this line here. Now 1, 3 is the only unique point that lies on both the lines. What we have discovered up till now is called the row picture of the system of equations. Because we looked at each row or each equation one step at a time. Now we want to look at the two variable system but using the column picture. I take the same set of equations again and I convert the system using matrix notation. It will be a matrix multiplied with a vector to give me another vector. Now since I know I have two variables, my column vectors must be 2 by 1 and because I have two equations, my matrix should have two rows. Check out my previous videos to learn more about converting equations to matrix notation. Remember that a matrix vector multiplication is defined such that it is equivalent to taking a linear combination of the columns of the matrix. Let me represent these three column vectors on an xy plane and now I need to figure out what linear combination of these green and red vectors must I take to reach the blue vector. I can eyeball it to see that if I take three red vectors and then one green vector, I will reach the blue vector. So three v's and one u solve the system which means that x equal to 1 and y equal to 3 is the solution. Here's something to observe though. The vector v doesn't lie on the line spanned by u and u doesn't lie on the line spanned by v. So these are linearly independent vectors and two linearly independent vectors in R2 must span R2 and by definition every vector in R2 can now be written as a unique linear combination of these two vectors. So no matter what this blue output vector is, in this case I can always reach it. So if the vectors span the entire space in which they exist, there will always be a unique solution to the system. And let me take another type of system now. These two equations in two variables. And as usual, assume AB solves the system. Subtracting equal quantities from an equation does not change the equation. It still holds. That is why subtracting the second equation from the first is a valid step. But we get 0 equal to 1, which is clearly nonsense. This means that our initial assumption must be wrong. 
there cannot be any point a b such that it satisfies both the equations simultaneously such a system of equations that has no solution is called an inconsistent system looking at this row picture graphically the situation is clear since the lines are parallel sadly they will never meet just like you and your crush the column picture says that x times the first vector plus y times the second vector should give me the output vector These orange and pink are my input vectors jinka koi bhi linear combination lekar kisi tarah i need to reach my required blue output vector this dotted line is the span of the input vectors but the output vector does not lie on this line which tells me that no solution exists since the output vector is not in the span of the input vectors a third case that i want to discuss is something with equations like these again assume ab solves the system carry out the substitution process and reach an equation like this the left hand side and the right hand side are the exact same thing so the equation is always true for all values of a and corresponding to every value of a we can get a value of b from the equations so the solution looks like this because c takes all real values such a system has infinite solutions it still is called a consistent system because at least a solution exists Graphically we have two equations representing two lines but they are essentially the same line so they have infinite common points now let's take a look at the column picture we first convert the system into a linear combination of two vectors after plotting the vectors on a graph we observe that this time again the span of the vectors is a line but now the output lies on the span of the input vectors so the solutions could be 0 1 1 2 2 3 and so on again we conclude that infinite solutions exist here is a summary of the three types of systems in two unknowns you can either get a unique solution no solution at all or infinite solutions one of these three things must always happen whenever you have any system of equations in any number of unknowns note that only when you have linearly independent vectors you can have a unique solution but if the vectors are linearly dependent you either get no solution or you get infinite solutions तो लीनियरली डिपेंडेंट वेक्टर्स के पास या तो कुछ नहीं है नो सोल्यूशन या एज बाबू राव पोटेट देने वाला जब भी देता देता छप्पड़ पाड़ के नो लेट्स ट्राई क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द 2009 थाउजेंड नाइन डी एस ई एग्जाम एज यूजल आई वुड सजेस्ट यू ट्राई इट योर सेल्फ फर्स्ट लेट इज स्टार्ट बाई कन्वर्टिंग द सिस्टम इन टू मेट्रिक्स फॉर्म एंड देन लुक एट इट यूजिंग द कॉलम पिक्चर लेट मी ट्राई प्लॉटिंग द वेक्टर्स फर्स्ट ग्राफिकली आई कॉन्ट सीन टू मूव फॉर्वर्ड दिस टाइम बट हेयर समथिंग आई कैन आस्क माई सेल्फ when will the two vectors be linearly dependent if you observe carefully when a is equal to 1 both the vectors will be exactly same in fact if you rewrite the entire equation you can see that even the output vector becomes the same as the input vectors what this means is that the output vector lies in the span of the input vectors and so we must have multiple solutions for a equal to 1 another observation i can make is that for a equal to minus 1 vectors are again linearly dependent and now if i rewrite the equation using this value of a we can say that the output vector is 1 1 graphically if i plot the two vectors i can see the span this time is again a line but the required output 1 1 is not in the span which means no solution exists for a equal to minus 1 for every other value of a the input vectors are linearly independent here's the proof of this to check for linear dependency of two vectors we look for the values of c1 and c2 that make this expression equal to the zero vector converting to row form i get two equations in c1 and c2 and solving for them gives me c2 times 1 minus a squared equal to zero now either c2 is zero or 1 minus a squared is zero we have already checked what happens when a is plus or minus 1 now if c2 is equal to zero it implies that c1 is also zero so whenever a is not 1 or minus 1 the vectors are linearly independent and we must get a unique solution this is one way to solve the problem but we will learn some faster methods to do the same problem in later videos now that we've looked at the standard two variable systems let me talk about some weird systems what if you have one equation in two variables we've already seen that the row picture says we have infinite solutions but let's see the column picture now the vectors are now one dimensional both are just one in this case as an example you can take 5 of the first vector and minus 1 of the second to reach to the output of 4 and so there are infinite solutions to this system another system could be with three or more equations something like this this time we have two vectors that are four dimensional vectors making a column picture isn't easy 
but you can observe from the matrix that they are linearly dependent vectors their span is just a scalar multiple of this vector no value of c can ever give me the output vector i know this because for the equality of the first element c must be 4 but this value of c doesn't work for the other elements then another weird system with three or more equations could look something like this since the vectors of the matrix are linearly independent the column picture makes life difficult this time so by the row picture clearly the first three equations are the same we can discard two of them and then easily solve the system in most cases though when the number of equations is greater than the number of variables such tricks might not work and we may have to use gaussian elimination that is something we will learn in future videos the key takeaway for you from this video should be that looking at a problem from a slightly different angle sometimes makes life much easier see you in the next video